Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark Spencer, your host. Steve Martin is our guest. Yes. How you I'm doing? Here again. I'm doing great. I'm here again. What's happening now? I, it's, uh, I saw you recently right here in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. We were um, in San Francisco for my birthday weekend and uh I was happy sure. birthday <laughs> thanks i'm not going to tell you how old i am there's just uh, it's no point in it it's just 39 with, again you're 39 again <laughs> let's just put it on this side of like on the other side <laughs> uh so we took uh, five d's and seven d's around the city and we shot a bunch of time lapse a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago and we just had a great time and so the video that i'm going to be uh, demonstrating from today is uh some of the time lapse video that we shot up there great so um what are we going to see? <laughs> we have, I mean, everybody see that, but like, uh, so this is going to yeah. be something about something well, about Final Cut Pro or some, just something about production or edit, editing. Editing. You know, yeah. For okay. example, um, Final Cut Seven had this great feature called Replace Edit, and basically what it allowed you to do is replace content at the playhead location. Or any any different way, right? But I, yeah, I love that. Replace well, that. It was huge. It, it was huge. And for, for example, um, here, I'm just kind of skim through uh, this. So this is, is this the stuff that you shot in, yeah. uh, in the city? Yeah. In fact, let me just show you a little bit of it. Here's a, I'll just play a little bit of it. So here's obviously the Golden Gate Bridge. I'll just play a little bit of it. And this was shot at one frame a second in RAW. So essentially, these are uh, a series of time-lapse tilt shift uh, movies that I shot in and around San Francisco for two days. We shot... 25,000 images in two days. 25,000 images. Yeah, quite wow. a lot. So that's a, that's a workout on the camera. <laughs> it is. So that's another story altogether, um, which is why I rented a camera. Ah. Okay, so <laughs> a lot of actuations. Yes. So here I have, um, I was going to talk about this replace feature. So here I have this shot, and I'm, I'm skimming through it, and it's not the right content. I, I, I really want... Uh, this action, this cable car, it hasn't shown up in the shot. I want a cable. Where is the cable car? It hasn't. It's not in there. Oh, yet. you know, there's a. Cable I know there's car, a cable car in but here, but it's not within this range that the shot. Exactly, and a quick in the, in the project. Exactly, the quick way to locate it is to, uh, you know, move your play it over the clip and hit Shift F, which is a match frame, and that will locate the clip in the event browser. It locates a clip in the in the event browser, and it also sets a range, the same range from what you're currently using in the project. That's right. right. So that selection range matches the current selection range okay. in the project. So even if you had, because because Final Cut now has these persistent in and outs, if you had different ones on there, it would have gotten rid of those and just shown you exactly what's in the project. That's true. So okay. now this is my new persistent range. Ah, okay. okay. So what it's showing me here is that's my in and out point. Now, if I skim through the clip, You'll notice that eventually the little, There's a trolley car. The little, yeah, little, but quite a bit further down. Yeah, a little bit further down. But it's not that I just want the trolley car to be in the shot. I want it to actually leave the frame at a very specific point. And that point is determined by this uh, sound or music marker down here. Let me zoom in. So I already have a marker placed in there. And okay. I, want, I want the timing of that cable car to align with that marker. In fact, if you play it, you have these things called pizzicato violins that kind of hit at that point. I'll play it. So that's what I think would make a nice point for the cable car to okay. leave. Okay, because I was going to say you could just, if you just wanted the cable car in the shot, you could kind of slip edit that with the you know, slip, tool. Slip, slip tool in fact, to get there. You could, but here's why I think it's not the best way to do it okay. the, what, your way. If I'm going to press T, get the slip tool, I click and hold, I could certainly slip it, but it's not being slipped in relation to the marker. I'm only seeing kind you of the no head. Idea. I have no idea where right. I am. Right. You can. You might start to see that you'll know the trolley's in the shot because all you can see here is the start and end frames That's right. of the clip. And you might know it's somewhere in the, in the middle, but not in a precise location. Right. If I drag far enough, I eventually see that trolley car. Is, but, yeah. but, but again, it's not in relationship to where the marker is. Okay. So this is why I really wish... Um, Apple, if you're listening, please put replace it playhead. That would that's just such an awesome command. It needs to be it needs to be brought back to Final Cut 10. It's and just to back up, you can do replace edit um, in Final Cut 10, but it it replaces it it replaces from the beginning or the end or the end. Yeah, and we're but, still going to do that. In the middle. So okay. my little workaround, we're going to use that replace fe feature that you just mentioned, okay. but we're going to add the addition of a marker to kind of help us okay. visualize where that point is. Got it. So Got this it. is what I do. Um, I make sure I the selection arrow, park my playhead, hit shift F to, uh, to do a, um, to a, essentially a match frame. And you can see I'm match framing here. Yes. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll skim to the point where I see the trolley car or cable car. I'm from San Francisco and I'm just going to move, move. 
just kind of reminds you of like Mr. Rogers' neighborhood a little bit. <laughs> it does. So, so what I'm going to do is skim just as the cable car is leaving because that's where I want it to line with that the pixicato string. So I'm going to select and I'm going to press M to set a marker. Okay. So super. that's the point at which I want the sync to happen. Now I'm going to I'm going to clear the in and out range currently by selecting the clip and pressing. Um, well, actually, I could just set an in point, and what Final Cut does is it'll always set the out point at the end of the clip. Okay. So I've reset it. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to take that range, and I don't. Again, the, what the in and out point right now is is irrelevant because we're going to change right, that. Right. So I'm going to drag that clip on top of the old cable car, turns white, release, and this time I'm going to choose replace from end because I'm my original selection is closer to the end. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do that, and you'll notice here. I ha there's my marker, that's where yes, the cable car yes. is. So now I get the slip tool, or by pressing T, and now what I can do is I grab, and now when I slip, notice I can actually see that marker moves. Okay, so you can just line the markers up. I can just line the markers up. So that's where I want the, uh, the if cable. If you uh, have snapping a lot, uh, enabled, will they snap to each other? Okay, press N. N for, for snapping. snapping, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Silly. Yeah, see, it'll yeah, see yeah, it's, it's, it does snap yeah. to the marker. Can you zoom in on that just so folks can really? Yeah, zoom yeah, in on that. So if I click and hold and uh, notice it'll snap mark oh, the marker. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I'm going to go ahead and back this up and then we'll play it. We'll play it, give it a little context here. And it takes off right on the right, right on the beat on, there. Right yeah. on the beat. So yes, there's a few more steps involved. Yeah. Um, you know, this is what I do in lieu of uh, using our place to play it, but it but it would obviously be really nice to have that. Right. But, it's a, right. but this is this is what I do to, to essentially do the same thing. Yeah, it lets you get there and precisely align. And you could do that, you're replacing that shot with itself, but you could replace that shot with any any shot. Any shot. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a quick way uh, to make sure that the, the the action that you want the frame lines with a specific you know music cue or sound effect. It could be even another clip, a graphic, doesn't matter. Great tip. It's a fun awesome. tip. Awesome. And tip. Um, replace edit. Uh, there's keyboard shortcuts to be able to do that too. There are there are uh, keyboard shortcuts, and uh, I, I think it's obviously a good idea to to look at them. I'm just take a quick look here. Make sure that you're looking at the default set and not a yes. custom set. That's yes. I'm telling you, that messes a lot of people up. I don't see it. Well, they, that's because they had created a, uh, their own set and they didn't switch back, back to the to default. The default. Yeah. But if you type in replace, uh, replace edit here, you'll see that their keyboard shortcut is replace uh, is just shift R. That's replacing the entire clip. Right, with the entire new clip. So that's it's right. not respecting the duration of what's already in the project. That's right. So okay. if you're replacing a clip of the timeline that's five seconds with a clip that's 10 seconds, you're going to get a 10 second clip yeah. and yeah. everything's going to be rippled down yeah. the timeline. These are the safest ones, replace from end, replace from start, because they'll always honor the current duration of yes, the clip in the timeline. Yes. Notice the keyboard shortcut for place to start is option R. You're going to have to sign your own. If you want one. If you for want place one. To end, yeah. Exactly. So what you could do is um, you can, uh, like, I might maybe want that shift, shift option. So what I'm going to do is like drag this. There. So now if I drag that here, it'll yes. use shift option as my command for replace from end. Replace from end, great. Although it's, I'm going to get a warning here to say that you're going to monitor, you're going to affect the default oh, set. Yeah, you, you should make a copy. Default, make a copy, yeah. Right, so yeah. I'm not going to do that, but I'm just saying you probably want a keyboard yeah. shortcut for replace at end. Excellent. It'll save time. You don't have to do this dragging, so for sure. Okay. Excellent. So there you have it. Mark, replace, slip. That's the name of this episode. Mark, replace, slip. I'm being replaced? You're being replaced, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, not replaced. No one can right. replace you. All right, so uh, more information on rippletraining.com. Rippletraining.com, lots of tutorials and stuff and lots of plugins coming. Yes, yeah, got a lot coming on. So thank you, Steve, and thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.